Président. Mr. Speaker, pursuant to Standing Order 83-1, I'd like to table in both official languages the 2023 budget documents, including notices of ways and means motions. Details of the measures are contained in these documents. Pursuant to Standing Order 83-2, I am requesting that an order of the day be designated for consideration of these motions. Mr. Speaker, Canada's economy has made a remarkable recovery from the COVID recession. Last year, Canada delivered the strongest economic growth in the G7. There are 830,000 more Canadians working today than when COVID first hit. We have recovered 126% of the jobs that were lost in those first months, compared to just 114% in the United States. When we announced a Canada-wide system of affordable early learning and childcare in our 2021 budget, we said that it would create new economic opportunities for mothers all across Canada and thus greater prosperity for all of us. And you know what, Mr. Speaker? It worked. I am so proud to say that last month, the labor force participation rate for Canadian women in their prime working years hit a record high of 85.4%. economic policy, Mr. Speaker. It works. So today, Mr. Speaker, there are more Canadians with good jobs than ever before. Putin et la pandémie. Putin and the pandemic have driven up inflation all over the world. The central banks reacted by launching one of the swiftest and most synchronized cycles of monetary tightening since the 1980s. And today, in Canada, inflation is going down. The inflation rate has been dropping for eight months in a row, sitting at 5.2% in February. The Bank of Canada expects it to fall to just 2.6% by the end of the year. In February, Canadians' average hourly wages rose by 5.4%, so paychecks grew by more than inflation. This means Canadians from coast to coast have more money in their pocket at the end of the workday. However, we all know our more vulnerable friends and neighbors are still suffering from higher prices. That's why our budget contains targeted temporary relief from the effects of inflation for those who need it. For 11 million Canadians and Canadian families, the new grocery rebate will help offset higher prices without fueling inflation. Because what all Canadians want right now is for inflation to keep going down and interest rates along with it. That's why the budget I've tabled today will enable Canada to remain the country with the lowest debt-to-GDP ratio in the G7. Yeah. 
We are seeing to it that the wealthiest Canadians and large corporations pay their fair share of tax so that we can keep taxes lower for middle class families and invest in our health care system and our social safety net. Canada is a country of peace, order, and good government. We have strong institutions and a resilient financial system that is the envy of the world. Our country has a proud tradition of fiscal responsibility. That is a tradition we are determined to uphold. We are refocusing government spending while taking great care not to reduce the services and direct support that Canadians rely on. By exercising fiscal restraint, we're ensuring that we can continue to invest in Canadians and in the Canadian economy for years to come, just as we have done since 2015. Because we know that investments in Canadians are also investments in our economy. This is what the U.S. Secretary of the Treasury, Janet Yellen, has referred to as modern supply-side economics. Nous investissons dans le large. We're investing in housing because our economy is built on people and people need a roof over their head. We are investing so that Canadian workers can acquire the skills they need and get to where the jobs are. We're investing to strengthen the immigration system. And we're bringing a record number of skilled workers to Canada to support our booming businesses. And we're investing in affordable child care. From coast to coast to coast, so that more Canadians no longer have to choose between family and career. Investing in housing, skills, and immigration and child care isn't just social policy, it's economic policy too, Mr. Speaker. The same thing goes for health care. So today, we are delivering the overall investment of $198 billion in our public health care system, which the Prime Minister announced just last month. helping every single Canadian find a family doctor, to tackling the unacceptable backlog of surgeries, to combating the opioid crisis that has devastated so many of our families and our communities, that has taken so many lives. We will ensure that Canadians receive the care they need. We will ensure that every single Canadian can rely on a world-class, publicly funded, universal health care system, one that is deserving of its place at the very heart of what it means to be Canadian. Just as we are reinforcing the public health care system we have today, we are also expanding its reach. Since December, our investments have helped more than 240,000 Canadian children receive the dental care they need. Just Bravo. Just think about that, 240,000 Canadian kids Maybe their parents couldn't take them to the dentist before. Maybe their teeth hurt. Maybe they missed days at school. It's so important. 
And that's why today I am so proud to announce the creation of a new Canadian dental care plan. By the end of this year, by the end of 2023, we will begin rolling out a dental care plan that will eventually cover up to 9 million uninsured Canadians. This, yeah. This will mean that no Canadian ever again will need to choose between taking care of their teeth and paying the bills at the end of the month. It will mean you can't tell the size of someone's paycheck by their smile. These are significant and necessary investments, Mr. Speaker, because a strong and effective public health care system is essential for a strong and healthy Canadian workforce. And we need a strong and healthy Canadian workforce now more than ever, because as we wrestle inflation to the ground, Canada must also navigate two fundamental shifts in the global economy. First, in what is the most significant economic transformation since the Industrial Revolution, our friends and partners around the world, chief among them the United States, are investing heavily to build clean economies and the net zero industries of tomorrow. At the same time, Putin and the pandemic have cruelly revealed to the world's democracies the risks of economic reliance on dictatorships. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As a result, our allies are moving quickly to friendshore their economies and build their critical supply chains through democracies like our own. Together, these two great shifts represent the most significant opportunity for Canadian workers in the lifetime of anyone here today. Including our most senior and respected members of this House. <laughs> now, this is not hyperbole, Mr. Speaker, or mere turn of phrase. When President von der Leyen stood in this House earlier this month, she said that she wants Canada and Europe to join forces for the climate, for our economies, and to end what she called Europe's dangerous dependencies on authoritarian economies. When President Biden stood in this House just last week, he told us that we are at an inflection point in history. He said that we had all learned the hard way that just-in-time global supply chains make us vulnerable. And he urged us to work together to build a shared future where Canada and the United States can anchor the most competitive prosperous and resilient economic region in the world. Yep. These are our closest friends, Mr. Speaker. These are our steadfast democratic allies. These are our two greatest trading partners. And like so many of our friends around the world, they need the expertise of Canadian workers, the ingenuity of Canadian businesses, and the resources that Canada has in such fortunate abundance. Aujourd'hui, today, and in the years to come, Canada has to seize this historic moment, this amazing opportunity we have or else we'll get left behind as the rest of the world's democracies build the clean economy 
of the 21st century. So, we are going to fight for Canadians and Canadian companies. We will make sure Canada seizes this historic opportunity. We are building a clean electric grid accessible to all Canadians from coast to coast to coast, which will protect the environment and provide Canadians and Canadian companies with clean, affordable electricity. No face. We are making Canada the best place in the world for businesses to invest. Because their investments revitalize communities and bring prosperity, in addition to good careers for Canadians. Canada has free trade deals with two-thirds of the world's economies. We are making Canada a reliable supplier of clean energy to the whole world. And whether it's critical minerals or electric vehicles, we will ensure that Canadian workers develop and process these resources and manufacture and sell the products our allies need. We will ensure that unions, which led to the creation of the middle class, remain on a solid footing. And we are helping Canadian workers get the skills they need. When the Government of Canada makes purchases of products from other countries, we will ensure those countries give Canadian companies the same access as Canada gives them. So, Mr. Speaker, we are building big things here in Canada. From a Volkswagen battery plant in Ontario. Yeah. To the Galaxy Lithium Mine in Quebec. Yeah, yeah. Yep. To the Trans Mountain expansion in Alberta. Terminal in Kitimat, BC. Yep. Our plan means good paying jobs, good careers for everyone everywhere, from our biggest cities to our smallest towns, from Toronto, Ontario to Peace River, Alberta. Yeah. workers building electric vehicles and our bus drivers who drive them, for our skilled tradespeople expanding our clean energy grid and building thousands and thousands of affordable energy efficient homes, for our miners and our energy workers powering Canada and the world, for our health care workers and our teachers who make our communities thrive for our farmers and our fishers who feed Canada and the world, for our incredible service workers who are as essential today as ever. For our forestry workers, for our climatologists and for our ecologists, for our engineers who design hydrogen plants and who design small modular reactors. For our computer scientists who have transformed Canada into a global artificial intelligence superpower. 
for Indigenous peoples, building major projects and sharing in the prosperity they create. And for our new generation of small business entrepreneurs, dreaming up solutions to the challenges of the 21st century and their hard-working employees providing for their families all across our great country. As I've traveled across Canada over the past year, Mr. Speaker, I have met a lot of incredible, hard-working Canadians. Jeff, an electrician who lives in Etobicoke with his wife, Cheryl, an ICU nurse. They are proud of their jobs and proud of their family. Their jobs have made it possible for them to raise. As Jeff said to me, I've got the skills to pay the bills. <laughs> Leonard. I met Leonard. He's a software developer in Quebec City. He codes charging stations, which are used all over the place, from San Diego, California, to Happy Valley Goose Bay in Newfoundland and Labrador. Two young union women. Nicole in Oshawa, who will start her first electrical placement this week. Well done, Nicole. <laughs> and Kayla, first in Edmonton and then again in Calgary. She teaches apprentices to weld, and she gave me a couple of lessons, too. <laughs> I've met potash miners and early learning and childhood educators. I've met scientists and innovators and the longshore workers and truckers who keep Canada's economy moving. And all across Canada, I've met people who value the same things. A good career that pays them well doing work they're proud of. The ability to live with dignity, to be who they are, to love who they love, and to be judged on their character rather than what they look like or where they were born. The belief that if they work hard, they can afford to raise their children and launch them into an even more prosperous future. And the conviction, Mr. Speaker, that because they live in Canada, by birth or by choice, Every single day represents a new, fresh opportunity. And that is what this budget invests in, the possibility for every single Canadian to share in the remarkable opportunities that Canada provides and in the new era of prosperity that we will build together. The brave people of Ukraine have reminded me, I think they've reminded all of us, that we must never take our freedom and our democracy for granted. We have the power to shape our country's future, and we must always be sure to use it. What a gift it is to call this remarkable country our home. Canada is a land filled with good, hard-working people, people who do big and important things. And it is because of us, the people of Canada, and the big and important things we will do in the months and years to come that I have never been more optimistic about the future of our great country than I am today. Yeah.